Hi, it's John here from Speedy Brick, and uh, welcome to another interview from an amazing Lego uh, fan designer. And I hope you enjoy our discussion. Uh, you can check out all my other interviews with Daniel Helms, with Sabrina Hendricks, with Leonard from 3D Supercar Bricks, from Nard, uh, from NV Carmox. Uh, I'll add links for all those interviews in the description below. And today we're going to talk to Matthew Cruz from Mad Dad Bricks, who's created some incredible mocks and uh, mainly on the sort of space theme but he's also done rail and he's got a really broad selection of designs which are were really amazing but what attracted me to him was a design that he did for the speed champions f40 and that really lit up the internet and i so i reached out to matt and thought okay let's build this uh, and put it on my channel and so I've been uh, built that and he's created another amazing little car. So I've built that as well. And he's agreed to talk to us. So, um, so perhaps you've seen some of his designs already on uh, Facebook or on Instagram, but we're going to talk to him firsthand and he's going to tell us all about his amazing designs. And hopefully he'll show us some things that we haven't seen yet. So uh, welcome, Matthew. Yeah, thanks good day. For, thanks for nice. joining us. No worries. Thanks, John. So we can uh, we can see all your designs on Rebrickable. That's what I can see. What I've seen, and you've got uh, Facebook and Instagram. Have you got any other stuff where we can check out your designs? Yeah, I've got a few things on YouTube, and um, I'm going to be doing some more tutorials and stuff like that. How to how to render in Studio and that sort of thing. So cool, cool. So uh, perhaps we can get started. And uh, so, firstly, welcome, uh, yeah. and thanks thanks for joining us. But perhaps you can tell us about yourself and thank you very much for sending the instructions that you did. Uh, really. yeah, no but perhaps tell us about yourself and how did you get started and what do you do for a living and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, cool. Okay. Well, um, yeah, so I'm Matt. I live in Australia, obviously. And I started actually like properly designing Lego at the beginning of 2022. That was after... A whole period of doing other things. Um, I've I've studied um, economics and marine sciences. I've done teaching and chaplaincy with seafarers and a whole bunch of other stuff. My wife is, has has been chronically ill since she's like fourteen, um, and we've got three young boys. Um, and so, the combination of all of that has put me in the category of being a full time carer. And so, I started doing Lego design as a way to keep myself a bit sane and have something else to occupy myself with and give myself a bit of purpose and yeah all that sort of thing so so the first thing that I actually designed because I saw the Blacktron Cruiser gift with purchase came out like yeah. whenever that was and I'd been following along this guy um Grohl's Lego he does some really cool like 90s space stuff and alternate builds and things and um he did an alternate build of the Blacktron Cruiser which is called the wasp and i saw that and it was about the like like the size that i thought you know that's about my level at that point i could i could do something like that and so i sat down with actually funny thing i've actually never built the blacktron cruiser because it's always in pieces building other things because like the first time i got it i just emptied the pieces onto the bed in front just sitting there on the bed next to my wife she's watching netflix or something and I was sitting there with all the pieces in front of me. I'm like, right, what are we going to do with this? And I came up with my very first model, the Blacktron Infiltrator, which essentially, you know, I just I just love jets and all that sort of stuff as well. We've got the Williamtown Air Force Base here. So it's always F F-18s and F-35s and stuff flying around. Yeah, wanted to be a pilot, but you know, <laughs> yeah. wear glasses and all that sort of stuff. So it's out. <laughs> but um anyway, so yeah, so I so, so so I designed this like Blacktron Infiltrator, which essentially it's a jet sort of version of a Blacktron spaceship. Um, so that was the first thing I did, and I did three iterations of it. I just sort of wasn't afraid to just put the first one up and then change it a bit and put it up as version two, and allow everyone to have the different versions as one file, you yeah. know. And and then from there, I just found a Blacktron space group put it in the group and that's that's where it started anyway you've right, only been building out. lego for two years yeah properly like properly designing my own stuff like i've been into lego, lego since i was like four 
and my like dark ages were only a couple of years yeah um yeah because like because i because i um like went to uni and then a few years after that the emerald knight came out we were never like well off enough to have lego trains and stuff most of my sets were like the small city sets and stuff next door neighbors had all the cool stuff so go to their place the emerald knight came out and i was like mate that's such a such a beautiful set so i bought it for 150 dollars, right and at that time they were still shipping directly from denmark so i had to wait for it to come all the way from denmark there was no warehouse in australia and built that and loved it later on after we'd had our son so okay you, you can edit all this stuff, obviously, it's fine. Um, I had that on display in my house. And after we had our first son, we had like people visiting to say hi to our son or whatever. At some point, I realized that someone had obviously picked up my Emerald Express and had a look at it and put it back down again. Because those like four by six or however big base plates with the Technic pin in them, like there's, it's, they're, they're all like a tile with a Technic pin so the thing can rotate under like the bogeys on the on the trains. The pin had been broken off. I was like, I'm like, someone's been into my house, picked up my train, somehow broken that off and just put it back there looking like it looks perfect. And so I'm like, what do I do? How do I get another one of these? And so and so that's how I discovered Brickley. So, yeah. so I went looking for this broken part so I found a guy in France who sent me a sent me one for a couple of bucks or whatever, and that fixed that. And at the same time, I realized that Emerald Knight was now worth like seven hundred dollars. I'm like, what happened there? So you know, it only cost me hundred and fifty bucks. And then I was like, and then so like put that aside. And then what year was that? So it would have been about 2016, something like that. Yeah, and so, prices have gone crazy, haven't they? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Some of your designs are really, really clever. So how Thank did you gain those skills? How did you, have, have you got uh, some engineering skills there hidden in the background? Like I'm all like self-taught, all of this stuff I, I just figure out as I go. I've always had an interest in how do things work and messing around with computers and figuring out like what every single setting does on the phone or whatever, you know, like, like I'm always messing around with things and trying to work out how to use things to their fullest extent, yeah. um, understanding the system properly and all of the ways things work and interact together within a system. And Lego is a system like anything else. But I've also got a bit of a creative streak. I like I play music and stuff like that as well. Yeah. Um, There's and... a lot of three dimensional thinking in this design yeah. process, though, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, I've got stuff on the shelf behind me which we're going to talk not... about because that that's one of the things i want to talk to you about actually so, so do you have a favorite lego theme because you started off with this space and blacktron but you've got um the stevenson rocket which has been at lego house i understand yeah yeah there's also just yeah, i mean kudos how incredible is that <laughs> i know right? be on display at that lego house it's amazing yeah uh, I also saw you you built a uh, an heirloom jewelry box on Lego Ideas. You've got yep. the pump house on the Bricklink Designer Program. Yep. Uh, you've just released a, a car, which you're going to tell us about as well. I mean, do you have a favorite theme? Are you building everything? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I think probably space and cars. You know, that's yep. that that's and and trains. Like as I said, like we only had lots of smaller sets. But with lots of small sets, you can build something bigger, you know. And so, so I, yeah, I never had the big sets to build. So I always like was forced to be creative. That's actually a huge part of the process, which, which I actually deliberately did with the Blacktron Cruiser was like, I, like I limit myself to just these parts and to see what I can do with that limitation. And I've found that in, in, in being creative, that's actually a huge part of it is, is giving you like giving yourself some deliberate boundaries, also watching what other people do and picking the point at which you want to jump into something. So I've been watching guys like Nard and Daniels Mox and 3D yeah. Supercar Bricks, all these guys, like when I started, I had no, concept of how they designed cars like that you know because 
I, I, I was blown away with the Speed Champions line of cars. Yeah. Like, they're just brilliant. Like, every single one is an absolute masterclass. I don't care if you like the car or don't like the car. Yeah, exactly. Or the pictures look good or don't. Like, I've learned that sometimes the pictures don't look good and you buy the car and it's brilliant anyway. So I just buy yeah. all of them. You know, yeah. so it's fun. Yeah. The way of building and the, they, they have added a lot of really clever techniques into yeah. into a very small build. Yeah, they're also cheating a little bit by adding, creating a whole lot of new parts every year. I've been trying to design stuff and couldn't make them, and then suddenly, it's it's available. Like uh, I built this, I designed this uh, Ferrari Formula One car. In yeah, I saw that. Uh, when I published it on Rebrickable, I was using for right. uh, silver spoons because they were the only yep. ones available. And suddenly I've got red ones because you can buy red ones now, right? So Yeah, awesome. Yeah, exactly. I, actually, I, actually, that ties into the limitation thing about creativity because obviously the Speed Champions team are absolutely pushing the limits yeah. um, and having to actually invent new physical things in the world to make it work. But we can't do that. And so the limitation that I try to give myself to enable people to actually build the stuff that I design is I don't use old parts. I don't use things that only come in sets that are like out of production, which is a good thing about designing for the Bricklink designer program because they release a new palette every series and it's only stuff that's in production. So I try to limit my digital building to that palette. Doesn't matter what I'm building so yeah. that the parts I know are at least available and people can get them. So have you have you ever built with Technic or are you purely working with system? I love Technic. Um, I do. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely love Technic. As like as soon as I yeah, was old enough to build Technic, I pretty much only built Technic. Before that it was all spaceships and then yeah. onwards it was all it was all Technic until I went to uni. That's sort of still a thing that's a l l like I'll push into at some point is doing technic mocks but yeah. technic's a whole different way of thinking you have to relearn the way you think about lego and how to do it so at this point i'm still in the awe and wonder stage of looking at guys doing like their own one eighth scale technic cars and stuff it's yep. just like mate no chance at this point so but one day <laughs> and it hasn't I taken me too long to get to the stuff i'm doing so hopefully yeah yeah so do you have a favorite Lego set, either official or fan design? Or... The ship in the bottle, I thought, was brilliant. Yeah. Um, I love that set. I love the Caterham. Yeah, the Caterham's nice. I've got one sitting yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's on the shelf there. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the Caterham. I, probably my favorite set. And I've got it put aside. I haven't built it yet. It's a model team set. So as I said, we never had any of the big sets when I was young. So this is this is 90s model team. It was like the precursor to creator expert and stuff like that. Yeah. So I've got the I think it's 5590, I think is the number. It's a truck with the like trailer with a helicopter on the back. Yeah. And yeah. you can and like the B models like this cool firefighting truck thing. Yeah. So um that's probably that's probably my favorite set. Yeah, um, they're, they're oh, cool, no, hold, they? hold on. I, I I I have built the helicopter, I just haven't built the truck. Right. So like that still stands up. Yeah, like, that's pretty I, cool, eh? Right. That that's a cool that's a cool Lego model. Yeah. You can see that it's built with all the limitations that the pieces have, right? Yeah, exactly. They didn't have to invent anything new. This is like this set is like 30 years old. I'd buy this today if they released it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And they should do more of that stuff. So the other thing you've been doing is, or you just started doing, is collaborating. So you started yes. collaborating on a new car with stickers, yes. custom wheels, and so maybe tell us about that because that's that's a, another new thing you've been doing, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's the first time I've actually been in a position to be able to reach out to someone and say, like, here's something that I've done already, like the Ferrari F40, that people have liked. Can we do something together? And, that, and yeah, so this collaboration, the uh, 1989 F40 IMSA, like the, the LM 
version that was a racing version, the racing spec, um, was the next obvious iteration of the F40. Taking the F40 design that you did, uh, yep. where you kind of had this exploding opening of everything uh, <laughs> version, which is what yeah, exactly. I thought of yours, which I just absolutely love. It's just fantastic. Uh, so opening doors, opening uh, bonnet, opening boot, engine visible. So you've taken this concept and gone another step. Yeah, exactly. We essentially just follow along the historical development of the car, right? So it started out like that. And then the next thing was they obviously race them so so i figured out some way of doing like of doing the splitter at the front work that out i haven't had making to a good yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah 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 exactly exactly so i just so i just fixed up fixed up the rear of that yeah um yeah actually like once you put these black tiles on there it gets rid of the red line across the back so i actually had to grab that from the the Audi e-tron yeah the um the red bracket so I sacrificed that car as well at the moment <laughs> um so I redesigned that uh, like I had to redesign all these air, air intakes and stuff so right so once I had the physical model of the LM or the Competizione the next step was to find someone who could do the decals and everything and do that design work I could I could probably have given it a go myself but it would have taken a long time and it's not the skill set that I really want to invest a lot of time in. So I'd seen Matthew Barry, Matt Spricks, Mox um, floating around on a lot of the groups and had seen his work. And so I just reached out to him and asked if he'd be interested in doing something together. Um, and he was on a beach in Cyprus having a cold beer, working from there for the day. Um, and he said, sure. You know, yeah, no, that's cool. And then, and then, so we went back and forth to find the right livery that would work. So, so, and so we settled on that one from first one from 1989 to 1990. That car was red, so we didn't have to change parts or anything. So we go with that first. He designed uh, a sticker sheet for you. Yep. yep. And and people can buy that sticker sheet now, right? So they can buy the design from you on Rebrickable. Yep. And they can buy the sticker sheet. Have you have you got an example of the sticker sheet there? Yeah, I do. Yeah, exactly. He he's he he sent me one, and there's even the QR code there. So people oh, can cool. scan, <laughs> cool. can scan that and go to his website. But how many but stickers are there? 54. My God. Yeah. As, as bad as speed champions. Exactly, exactly. Um not you want to just... make it authentic looking, right? So yeah, exactly. You want to make it authentic looking, but I'm also thinking build experience as well. In this, I've not only like just selling the instructions and then buy the sticker sheet. He does do this at the bottom to yeah. indicate sticker placement. So, but I wanted to integrate where the stickers go into the actual instructions so that people can do it like a normal Lego set. Yeah. I even took the Lego icon for the stickers so it looks the same. Anyway, <laughs> once we were far enough along with that, I wanted to have the proper wheels. And it just so happened that um, Gautier from GT Prayer Cars, because I've seen his work as well. He does a lot of stuff. And I went looking and he had actually already made the exact rims that I needed. That was easy, you know, because um, so, yeah. So I just asked him if he wants to jump in with us. Um, so the three of us, like, put this out together for people to, yeah, buy and build themselves. And I, I understand it's been pretty successful already, right? You're, what, number three on the rebrickable list? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It went to, pretty quick. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's incredible. So you've got the stickers from uh, coming from uh, Matt's Bricks. Uh, you've got the wheels coming from GT, what's it called? Yeah, GT Korea Cars. GT, GT Career Cars. I'll put the links in for those below. Uh, so if people want to have a look at your design on Rebrickable and look at the stickers and, and uh, the wheels that are being made uh, so that they can buy those if they want to. So I'll put those in the description below. But are you doing any other collaborations with any other companies? I know you're collaborating on uh, with Bricklink because you're in their designer program, but anybody else? Yeah. No, not at this point. This is not the first yet. time I've not, not yet. Someone's going to be reaching out to you, I'm sure. Oh, let's hope so. 
Yeah, yeah, this is the first time I've done anything. And the BrickLink Designer Program, absolutely anyone can enter that. Before we talk about that, so uh, you've got such an amazing variety of stuff that you've already done in quite a short period of time. What what inspires you to develop a specific concept or design? How, how do you get the inspiration in the first place? I think it's probably just whatever jumps out to me as something I'm interested in, right? I've I, I find it really difficult to force myself to design something in particular. There are guys who obviously have an a, like a ridiculously intense passion for just cars, right? And so you see a lot of these guys, you go to their Instagram page and it's just all cars. And part of that, I think, is a deliberate like business thing right yeah. so they want to have a consistent branding and a consistent thing but i'd be surprised if they didn't build some other stuff occasionally as well right i sort of want to like show like the whole journey of like the design journey so that's yeah that's why I, like I'm, I'm quite open and transparent and show everything that i'm doing and um yeah but in terms of in terms of what to design it's basically whatever jumps out at me. Yeah. And okay. So, for example, whatever you get so, inspired by on the day. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's also trying to jump on something when it happens, both for the aspect of being the first to do something if you can, but also like striking while the iron's hot, sort of thing, when the inspiration's there. So, yeah. when the Aston Martin Valiant, like when pictures came up for that, I seriously. <laughs> Yeah, here's here's the first version that I did in black and orange. Yeah, I like yours better. Yours is better than mine. <laughs> I just really loved that car because it had that like muscle car, like Mustang esque sort of vibe, which Aston Martin had back in the day as well. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, but people see that and they think Mustang or something. Right now, that just jumped out at me as a thing, and but also I'd been able to reverse engineer the f40 so reverse engineering the f40 was my first step into doing any speed champions so i thought if i can do that if i can push myself to a level where i can do something like reverse engineering a car that hasn't come out yet then i might be able to give it a go designing one from scratch no you did a yeah. good job you did a good Thanks. and it was it was also quite different in the process of building this was also quite different from from the other guys uh, some designers you can really see how some designers adopt a certain um, development process in their build and yours right. is quite different so it, it was also for me it was also interesting because um, it's not the same building process as as lots of the others I tried to break it just into in in, in in into the two sections so i sort of followed the process as it would be if it were a real set yeah so it's sort of like lego setting the standard and i sort of want to follow that as much as possible but so how much time did you or do you normally invest in either developing or, or designing a model uh, from you know kind of and do you start with a digital model or do you start with a physical model yeah so I probably spend too much time. Um, my wife would probably agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, probably spend too much time designing for something like the Valiant. So the Valiant took me maybe two days, not full time, not not full time, but sort of do it over a couple of days. Um, and then I'll let it sit for a while and I'll give it a couple of days and come back to it and look at the original car, look at what I've done, see it in a fresh set of eyes in in a fresh light and then see what needs to change so the actual bulk of the design of anything i do is done fairly quickly to like rough out the shape of it and then the refinement takes a while and it's not something that i personally can do in one go i need yep. to leave it a few days come back to it so i can look at it afresh so um do you have any other steps in your process is that kind of do the do the first bit, come back to it a couple of days later with fresh eyes. Is there anything else in your process? Yeah, there is. Um, and this is actually the thing that kicked off um, 
Stevenson's rocket, which is sitting right there. Yeah. Um, that was actually a nice coincidence of studio releasing a new feature at the time, which to me was an absolute game changer, right? So they allowed the feature of importing a reference image into the building space. So you no longer had to sit there with some blueprints or a picture and flick between the two, right? And yeah. and and try and try and get your things to the right proportions and things like that. You could actually put the image in the three-dimensional space and directly build on top of it. So that's how I got Stevenson's rocket to be as good as it is. And and so that's what I did with the Valiant as well. So I just make sure to get all all four sort of side images of the car, whether whether blueprint form or official photos or whatever I can get my hands on. That's yeah. that's good. And then I build directly to that. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. One of the things that I think you're very clever in it is creating all these visual the kind of this the visual story on Facebook and stuff. So you got some amazing photographs and images that you've used. It's obviously you put quite a lot of effort into that, but are, are you using any specific tools? Does that all come out of studio or, or stud IO rather? Yeah. So I've sort of tried again to push things to their limit as much as possible to see what it's capable of. And yeah, I don't have the time or the, computer hardware to be able to mess around in blender and do animations and all of that sort of stuff i have played with it and it's something that i could do the investment of time for me is not worth it so it's it's a better use of my available time to render stuff to learn how to do that in studio so i found the first step was to learn how to change the lighting you can force studio's renderer to use a different file for its lighting so you can change the environment that it looks like it's in and yeah. then so i was doing that for a while so that looked pretty cool and then and and then it occurred to me to actually build a reflective digital light box right so people have light boxes that they photograph their actual models in gives a nice lighting environment nice diffuse lighting and stuff i was like well you can do the same thing in studio you can build it out of lego right with tiles or the backs of base plates and things like that render it and you get the reflection of the image that you're using to produce the light so that's essentially what i'm doing i'm i'm it, like all my renders is purely studio and that's very and clever then, yeah so i'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to do that if people know how to do good rendering like that yeah then everybody gets better and then I'll have to find something else to improve. <laughs> you're you're selling your designs on Rebrickable, which is a great platform for Lego fan designers. Rebrickable's like got everything you need. So exactly. I'm, I'm really happy with that at the moment. I have sort of um, played around a little bit with selling kits of stuff. Yeah. So I actually designed a um, a wheelchair, like a like a power chair, and that came out of a lego ideas competition like a stem competition and people saw that and wanted to buy it and so i had to go at building a kit and shipping that off and putting it in the right numbered bags and doing that whole thing but it's 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 a lot of work to be selling kits so and, and brick link works pretty well if you just want to buy parts exactly yep yeah. although sometimes you have to buy from lots of people <laughs> you do yeah you end up buying from lots of people and throwing in lots of extra minifigs or something to meet the minimum buy limit from people <laughs> so we talked a little bit about this already this uh valiant so thank you very much for sending me the instructions for this but perhaps what you're becoming famous for or become famous for is is this baby the little uh, modifications that you created for the f40 which we talked a little bit about but is it do you want to talk a bit more about this all the things that people can do with their because you've got a few versions of this, right? So you've got a a pro version and a and a non pro version. Yeah, exactly. So the first thing that stood out to me with the F forty obviously was the headlights, which there's been a lot of discussion about. I can see why they made the decisions that they did, um, especially to keep the outer limits of the car in line with 
the body work my little head headlight modification with the cheese slopes you have to push everything out by like a plate or half a plate or whatever it is i thought it'd be worth having a go at, at quote unquote fixing <laughs> the things that lego's done differently because lego has to design to a lot of like limitations i can't remember it's like a eight or nine plus rating or whatever it is on speed champions so it has to be able to survive being pushed down a hallway as fast as possible to some kid at the other end of the hallway and then pushed back again and smash into the wall and not turn into 372 pieces so there are a lot of all the fans are adults right no yeah exactly that's right not all fans are adults lego needs to remember but it would be good if lego designed things for adults at this scale you know because you can see from what i've done with the f40 there's the potential to do a lot there is yeah with, there is a lot yeah. and with the the leaked images because i uh, and as i said i reverse engineered the car from the images one of the images was actually like sort of like that so you could sort yeah. of see into the engine bay a little bit and i got really excited because we don't normally get a decent engine in speed champions yep. like if there's an engine at all and so the fact that you could see the top of the engine not only could you see those parts but you could see even in the leaked images you could see down the side of it that there's some space there and i'm like oh here we go like we're actually going to get a like and a you car that the deserves engine, it as well right the f40 deserves a real engine and then when we saw the actual thing and it didn't have an engine, I was like, oh, come on. Like, like there's heaps of space in there yeah. that they could actually do that. All of that was done digitally. And all of that design was done before the set was even released. So even the, the rear lifting up, that was all done di digitally before the set even came out, before I had it in my hands. That wasn't too bad, actually, because I figured out what the design must be figured out how to allow the rear to separate properly not just lift the whole thing up but allow to have that rear bumper and exhaust stay where it is so that canopy can lift up away from it it does make the rear a little bit um weaker than i'd like and people have offered some solutions to fix the wing on a bit more securely but me being the perfectionist that i am <laughs> um those solutions are good but they raise or lower the rear of it just half a plate which is no longer you know aerodynamic <laughs> so so the headlights were the first thing i assumed there was an engine in it so i designed one and then did the rear to lift up as well because once i'd done it actually actually that happened accidentally because I, I, well, because I wanted to show off the engine. Yeah. Right. It's so in my renders, yeah, right. So I wanted to show off the engine. So in my renders, I actually removed the entire back of it and sat it aside, which physically wouldn't have been possible at that point. But then once I put it online, I'm like, oh, people are going to assume that the back can come off when it couldn't. I just yeah. wanted to show off the engine. I was like, oh, now I have to design it so the back can come off. <laughs> so so to meet whatever people's expectations are but i wanted to make it as real as possible and obviously like i would have liked to have done the front but it wasn't something i could figure out digitally but once i had the set in my hands and i could physically see how it was was done it came to me how yeah, i could actually do became, that as well i'm obvious right yeah thank you again for sending me the instructions I, I really really enjoyed building it and it was lots of fun taking the the F40 apart and then rebuilding it again. Uh, and I did buy, strangely, I did buy another one, uh, but I haven't built it and I've used the parts for something else now. So <laughs> one day <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll build the new one again. I also wanted to talk about some of your other amazing designs. Sure. Uh, is there anything in particular that you want to kind of highlight that you've got? Um... Yeah, yeah, sure. So probably, probably the next best seller <laughs> oh, that's at, the cool. <laughs> at the moment is this which again was a reverse engineered thing before it was released and then blacktronized so this is essentially the um the pharrell williams 
black spaceship on oh. top of the like rainbow yeah whatever that is right um strange i thought it was set. that one from toy story yeah no this is this this is this, this is that like being into blacktron having had the the cruiser come out as a gift with purchase and then brick clicker or who like whoever does the leaks and stuff um said that there would be a black spaceship coming out at some point in 2024 and so everyone assumed or at least hoped that it was going to be a new blackthron ship and then but it wasn't. when the leaked images came out and it's some pharrell williams thing i'm like oh like i've like i've listened to nerd but never really into that sort of music i was like but it's a decent spaceship like it's actually a decent spaceship so i figured that out and then digitally once again so i worked out the original set and then just blacktronized it and I wanted to make it like as mean as possible. So it's sort of like got this sort of MiG-15 engine yeah. intake. Um, and once again, in terms of adding stuff within the limitations of the set, right? There's actually a lot of space inside here, which yep. I don't think the set uses, but there's enough space to to have an extra spaceship ah, cool. inside it. Right, and so that's like a little, little sort of escape pod thing. Um, cool. I'll just show the um, the rear of that can all come down, and it's actually flown this way. So, so the pilot actually stands in that, and that can sort of fly around because, like, I like the slave one from yeah um, Star Wars mm -hmm. as well. So, so you also make your own instructions, right? I, I presume you use Stud IO for that, and then yeah. And then how do you finish it off? Because your your instructions are quite nice. Oh, thank thank you. Um, yeah, once again, it's all pushing Studio to its limit um, in terms of what you can do with it. I've learned not to try and do the actual introductory pages and things in Studio. Um, yeah. So I just do the bare bones instructions and then add the other PDF pages onto the front and back of it. But in terms of actually making the instructions, I learned very quickly because I see a lot of people put incredible designs up on Flickr and Instagram and places like that. And they're very clear. I don't make instructions for my buildings. Um, no instructions available. Don't even ask. It's just, it's just too much work for people to do instructions. It's not that bad. It's just you've got to have the logical build process, right? And setting up all the steps in studio before you even go to the instruction thing because studio has the step-by-step -step thing on, to, on 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 the side of the screen right so as long as you construct your model with lots of sub models and things that put it into some logically coherent build order yeah. um, that you can break down then it's not too hard to make instructions and do you use your own instructions first to rebuild your model yeah i do yeah it sort of depends what it is so i usually just go through visually like I, I export the pdf and then i run through the instructions and i often find things that are round back to front or that should come before something else that would make it a better build experience um but then i do sit down like particularly like particularly with the Valiant, because it was the first Speed Champions car and still the only Speed Champions car that I've completely designed from scratch. Um, I wanted to check that that worked. And so this was the first one that I actually did a lot of physical prototyping with, yeah. um, which is partly why this is orange. Um, I took the McLaren F1, made sure that the rear would be stable enough and all of that sort of stuff. So I did a lot of physical prototyping. That's not normally something that I do. I can normally sort of visualize how things will work physically and know whether they'll be stable enough, um, just building digitally. And I also try to set myself a little bit of a rule as well to keep the cost sort of under control is that if I design something, put it on rebrickable, I'll, I'll then only spend the money to buy the parts for it myself if other people are willing to spend the money to buy the instructions. <laughs> so, so that helps offset the cost a little bit of buying the parts as well. Yeah. And it also means that I'm only 
buying parts for things that are that other people deem are worth buying. I've got three boys and stuff, and while I'd love to build every single thing that I design, it's just not feasible. Like you mentioned the jewelry box from before. Like I would love to be able to build that and give it to my wife as an anniversary present. But to do that through Bricklink is like more than a thousand dollars. And until the pump house, that was the biggest thing that I designed. And that was the first thing that I'd ever designed in studio um, that wasn't an alt build as well. So so we think about the kind of the most challenging part of designing. What what, what would you just say is the most challenging part? Uh, coming up with the idea of what to build in the first place. <laughs> the inspiration. Think, Having some yeah, inspiration. Exa yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's sort of like waiting for the inspiration to happen. Like, yeah. so for example, with the pump house, so I've actually been designing sets and entering them in the Bricklink designer program now for just on a year now. Yeah. So my one year Facebook memory came up for, for, for Stevenson's rocket. Um, so that was the first one that I put in. So it's sort of a case of following where things go naturally as yeah. much as possible, not trying to force designs or, force things to happen um, because I, I I personally find that really difficult, as I said. So do you have yeah. a favorite building technique that you use or like, do you like building with studs on the side or studs not on top? Or do you have a combination of things that you like to use as a building technique? Like I can't say anything like particular, but I do like to have as much complexity in the smallest space possible while keeping it stable yeah so that's another thing where i'm like try to push the limits a little bit give myself that boundary and force myself to be creative yeah that's sort of what i do i try like i'll try and build to an image like with stevenson's rocket uh, was the first one that i like built to digitally um yeah. with that feature and with the valiant as well um with the valiant actually the part that I was happiest with w was was this rear window. Yeah, that's really thing. nice. I, re I I think that was very clever the way that you got the three three four layers there, and all fitting together. That worked so well. And not only did it fit together well, I actually wanted it to have like a little gap between the panels. So if you look at the one that you've got there, it should have a very small gap between each of the panels. Yeah, so in terms of building technique, I have a thing that I want to achieve, like those panels being stacked like that. And then I'm like, how can I, how, like, how, how can I do this with, with bars or clips or whatever, like introduce other things um, into it so, so, so that it works. And some of the best models actually i think and i'd love to see lego do more of this is is combining technic and system because i think that's where things like really start to come alive because a lot of the technic models now are built for aesthetics less so than functions i mean cars only have a certain number of functions anyway yeah but some but some of the best technic sets are like 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 um like the helicopter and stuff like the big rescue helicopter i don't know if you this beast yeah right this this thing like it's huge like the point it's huge and the point of technic i think should be functionality and education i'm 38 years old i basically know how a helicopter works right but in building this and actually being able to manipulate the pitch of the blades and everything from the sticks in the cockpit, like it's insane. That's, that's pretty clear. And, and you learn actually, actually how a helicopter works from the physical model, from actually building it. So if you can incorporate proper technic functions, whether it's steering or whatever, or some other cool thing into a model that's, like beautiful from a system building perspective that's what i'd really love to see so i tend well you've got one behind you the, the the porsche uh, which one uh, you oh, yeah. i'll actually get this and show you because so i actually show you this one because it's a bit of a special one 
because it's signed by the designer. So to go back, what I was saying before, the first set that I ever designed was the Blacktron Infiltrator. And that was inspired by seeing this guy, Grohl's Lego, do his own alt build of that set. And I thought, right, that's that's about my level. At that point, I could jump in and do that. Anyway, it wasn't until later when when this set came out, right? This This set came out a little while after that. And this guy on Instagram that I'd been following for his space builds, there's pictures of him signing sets with fans in like Croatia or wherever it is. And I'm like, hold on a sec. Anyway, it turns out that guy is Milan Reinl, who is one of the like main technic designers at Lego. Okay. Right? I had no idea. I just thought he was another dude like and he is. He is just another dude like me and us who like building Lego. He just builds lots lots of space stuff. But anyway, it turned out that he designed this. And so I said, mate, look, if I give you some money, can you get a set, sign it, and ship it to me? And he wrote back and he said, no, nah, it's too expensive to ship from Denmark, but I'll be in Australia tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm pretty, like, that was hey, nice of him. Like, like, I'm like, you, you're coming. And so he's like, yeah, I'm going to be there tomorrow. So I bought the set or well, actually i didn't even have this set i like he because I, I i live about two hours from sydney he was flying into sydney he said he's going to be there for one night before he picks up a camper van and starts trekking around australia and so i had to go from here i was i was on the train we made it like five stops a little bit of the way to sydney on the train and then all of the radios for the whole train network for the state failed, <laughs> right? And I'm on this train in Sydney, and I have to be in Sydney before six o'clock, which is when the Lego store shuts, because I have to buy this set and then meet the guy. <laughs> so I got off the train, called every rental hire car company that I could until I find one, and hot footed it in this little Yaris or whatever it is all the way to Sydney, just in time to buy this from the Lego shop and then meet Milan at the backpackers that he was staying at, get him to sign it, have a chat about our kids and whatever. Cause we're just two dads building Lego. And that's seriously what I love about the Lego community is even the people that are like, you know, working there. Like, yeah like working there they're just people like us who just love designing stuff and that's why i love giving shout outs and to the actual designers because actually you'll notice in the instructions for that gt40 they actually spelled his name wrong oh, <laughs> yeah yeah and so it's like and so it's like the design like the actual individual people designing the lego sets deserve way more exposure and credit yeah and, they do they, they absolutely you know and do. yeah and so i i don't i try to do that for them in a similar way that you're trying to do that for me and that's that's lovely i love that thank you that's, that's cool is there anything extra you would have liked to be able to uh, build but haven't been able to just either technically it's not possible or the parts aren't available so uh so matt have you got any new projects that you're working on now um, I'm a bit exhausted from the pump house, actually. Yeah, mate, the pump house is the biggest set that I've ever designed. So 4,000 pieces. And probably the most grueling part of that was the instructions. The instructions took probably at least 40 hours. Like it was in, it was a proper full-time entire week. Yeah, um, and that's for the so BrickLink the designer program. And people can look in the instruct in the description below and i'll put links in and and, and for that as well so yeah, you've got cool. no new projects At, well i've got i've got ideas i've got concepts i've got i've got suggestions that people have made for new speed champions things so if anyone want to give me an idea or a challenge um i've 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 got a few sitting in the back of my head and things that people have suggested. Oh, be but I'm just, what you asked for. Yeah, exactly. Well, no, nah, give them to me. 
because because I'm waiting for that inspiration to strike again. <laughs> and when it does, you'll all know about it. That's for sure. People can reach you uh, on Facebook and how else? Yeah, I'm everywhere except on TikTok. I don't have TikTok, but everywhere, just it, it, like it's the same, just Mad Dad Bricks. Mad, That's the Mad same Dad tag Bricks. everywhere. Yep, yep. Yeah, and yeah, and you can just go to maddadbricks.com. And that brings up my link tree page with everything there. So, all right. So people can reach out to you, and if they've got some great ideas, they can send send them your way. Absolutely. Cool. Well, Matthew, thank you so much for sharing all these amazing stories and the insights you've given us, and a bit of your Lego journey. It's been really cool to to talk to you about it. Yeah. Thank and you. learn more about all of your amazing projects. I really appreciate the time you've given us and I hope everyone has enjoyed our chat. Um, and of course, if they want to see more about, of your designs or even buy some of them, they can get the instructions on Rebrickable and I'll put all the links in the description uh, below. Uh, so Matt, thank you very much and uh, thanks everyone uh, for watching. And don't forget to give us a like and subscribe if you want to see more of... Uh, of these sort of videos and until next time bye please click to subscribe for more videos and watch my build and review videos by clicking here thank you